Welcome to April's Legal Challenge. Today's problem is design circular queue. Design your implementation of the circular queue. The circular queue is a linear data structure in which the operations are performed based on FIFO, first in, first out principle, and the last position is connected back to the first position to make a circle. It is also called a ring buffer. Um, to give you the benefits of a circular queue, and here are the functions. The front returns the front item of the queue. The rear returns the last item. So it's kind of like peak. And on queue is like appending to our queue. DQ is basically popping off that first element. And is empty represents whether this queue is empty or not. And full is whether it's completely full. Because we do have a K that we initialize with, which means this is the max size that we can have in our queue. OK, here's the follow-up. Uh, you can't use a built-in queue. I wasn't going to do that anyway. so doesn't matter here. So basically, we're going to use a list, right? And we initialize it starting with a k. Say that we had a k of 3. So we would initialize a list with just whatever values in the beginning, probably none. Uh, and this is kind of like saving these positions at first. Now, we know that we're going to use a circular queue. So just intuitively, we want to have some sort of pointer. Uh, we'll call it head, which is going to point at the beginning of the queue and the tail which is going to be pointing at the end of the queue. And this is going to increase every time, tail is going to increase every time we append, while the head increases when we dequeue, which basically pops off the value. Uh, notice that we're not actually returning the value itself, though. We're just returning a true or false when we queue or dequeue. So say that we start off here. We had three values stored in the beginning. So we on queue, let's say, one at first. Uh, then we on queue two at first, or two second. And each time we append something, basically this tail is going to represent where we can add to. So at first the tail points to the very beginning, then it's going to move ahead. And then and say that we like popped off the, popped off the DQ. So now this head point should be popped off here, and this head pointer point, points to this point here. Now since it's circular, say that we added three, and now tail moves ahead. Now we're at the very end, right? But notice that we have still have space in the beginning since we popped off uh, by dequeuing. So what we would do is actually move our tail again to the beginning, assuming that there's still space in there. We can add four here. Um, so basically, uh, to figure out whether this queue is full or not, you kind of imagine if the head and tail are at the same position, then it would be full. But that wouldn't work, right? Because we start at the very beginning, say the tail moves, wraps around all the way, how do we know like when it wraps around? So uh, in order to kind of go around that, instead of keeping track ahead, like figuring out whether it's full by that, what we can do is keep track of the size of our array, um, how many we've added, or how many we've popped off so far. And once this size is equal to the max that we can allow, the k, then we know that it's full. And if the size is 0, then we, we know it's empty. So we can't pop off or DQ anything anymore after that. OK, so uh, let's start off by initializing some variables that we need. We know we need the head, start the zero index. We know we need the tail, also starts at the zero index. And we know we need the size. And this is going to start with zero, but we need to keep track of the max size here. I'm just going to call that k. And basically, when the size equals k here, that means it's full. Okay. So we can keep that track of here. We can say if self.size equals self.k, then it's full. So return a true. Otherwise, return a false. In the same way, is empty is going to be if self.size equals 0, then return a true. Otherwise, return false. So when we're on queuing, first we need to check if this is full or not. Because if it's full, then we can't add anything else. So if is self dot is full, then we return um, false, because we can't queue anything else. Uh, otherwise, we have our tail, right? And this tail keeps track of where we can add values. So what we'll do is say self dot, oh, of course, I need to first initialize our list. I'm just going to like queue here. And we're going to just say none times k, which basically represents how many values we can have. So self dot queue at self dot tail is going to equal our value here. So this is the big tricky part. Uh, other than size, we're going to increase that. Here, now we need to figure out what do we do when the tail wraps around. 
Uh, and to take care of that, normally we just add plus one here, but we're going to have to do a, a mod modular function here uh, to make sure that it wraps around. And we luckily have the length of our array um, with self.k. So this ensures that once it hits the end, if we add another one, it's going to go all the way back to zero. Okay, same way here in DQ. Uh, first, we need to check if it's empty. So if it's empty, then return false because there's nothing to um, pop off. Return true here. And if it's empty, then what do we do? We are going to decrease our size and we are going to increase our head in the same way. I'm going to say self.head plus one modular self.k. And notice that we're not actually updating any values here. Uh, I mean, you certainly could set self.q, self.head to like a none value to make sure that we're kind of pretending like it's pop, popped off. But we don't really need to do that because uh, luckily with the size here, it's going to keep track of whether we have values or not. So once it hits zero, even if in the list we have those previous values which we supposedly popped off, it doesn't matter because we're not going to return it here. Um, so if uh, the front, we got our C is this empty, right? If self dot is empty, well, then we can't return anything, so we return negative one. Uh, otherwise, we should return self.q.self.head, right? And same thing here. If self dot is empty, we return negative one. Otherwise, we return the self.q.self.tail. But one thing to note is we're actually going to have to minus one here because tail actually keeps track of the index number that we're going to add to next. So we would actually have to look at the previous one um, to get the very last value we have in our queue. So let's see if this works. And it looks like that's working, so let's go and submit it. Oh, uh, no. Okay, let's see. True, 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 false. Hmm. Oh. Yep, gotta return a true here when I DQ, otherwise I won't know what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and try it again. All right, so there we go. So each one of these functions is actually O1 time complexity, right? Because we have all the values stored up here. Um, so we don't need to actually ever search anything. Uh, we do use O of n space, but that's obvious because our queue needs to store that. But otherwise, uh, hope this made sense. It, I wouldn't say this is an easy problem, but um, but yeah, I think the trickiest part here is to figure out how to keep track of the head and tail and making sure that it wraps around. So, all right, hope that helps. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.